What's up, people? Happy Thursday. Hope all you're having a great day. Um, today's episode of Days of Our Lives, the best. Um, I enjoyed it. So let's get down to this shit. So Kristen, her and Teresa met up. Well, they didn't meet up, but she kind of interrupted her phone call to Ann. Teresa is way too cocky. She's way too, she's just arrogant. And thinks that, I mean, I give her props because she stood up to Kristen and she stood up to Victor Kiriakis before um, when they were in the hospital. I give her props for not showing no fear because she know that if she show fear, they're just going to eat her ass up. But trust me, they're going to eat you up anyway. You're a little fish in a big ass pond full of sharks and there ain't no way in the world you're going to beat them. So you might as well give up that attitude. She trying to act like she not afraid of Kristen. Bitch, yes, you are. So, Kristen basically told her, stay the hell away from Brady. So, Ann was at the Horton Square when she um, noticed that Aiden was sitting there having a drink. And he a little tipsy. So, basically, Ann sat at his table trying to be a little whore. Basically trying to, you know, drink with him and sleep with him. Ann is such a hoe. Like, seriously, you're throwing yourself at a guy you barely know, willing to take him back to your place or to a hotel and sleep with him. You're you're just a whore. Talking about I'm willing to do anything with any almost anyone, almost anything with almost anyone. You're a whore. Why would you walk up to some random person that you barely know that you've only seen a few times, barely even know, and you're willing to screw him? You're a whore. Um. So anyway, she meets up after he blows her off. She meets up with Teresa at Club TBD. And Teresa comes up with this dumbass plan to call Brady and pretend like she was afraid of Kristen. So that way he would be overprotective of her. What dumbass plan is that? That plan is so stupid and it's so high school. You're going to have to come up with something much bigger and better than that if you're going to beat Kristen. Because that plan is surely not going to work. Kristen Demira is not a bitch that that plays little high school games. Her games are much more lethal, deadlier than the bullshit that Teresa is coming up with. So you might want to go back to the chalkboard and try again, sweetheart, because that that little plan is dumb. It may work for a minute, but it's stupid. Number one, you put his father in a coma. Kristen has her and Stefano have a drug that's going to take him out of that coma. So trust me, he's going to be far a little bit more forgiven towards her, maybe more grateful than he would be towards you. Her only option here, in which I'm thinking that they're probably going to go up with, is for Teresa to get pregnant by Brady. So that way she has a safety net because there's no way she's going to go to prison. If there, There's no way Brady or John is going to send her to prison if she's pregnant. There's no way. But her plan is so dumb. It's so juvenile. Come up with something bigger. You're going up against a Demir. And there ain't no way you're going to win. Especially not up against Kristen. That bitch is psycho and I love it. I love me some Kristen. So Brady showed up to Dan's apartment because he was figuring out. He's trying to figure out why they're not transferring John. Remember, they can't tell Brady about what Kristen is doing because that was the term of her deal. So... She goes, I mean, Brady goes to Daniel's apartment and Daniel basically tells him that they're not moving him yet because they still want to, you know, run some more, you know, test or whatever, you know, double check some stuff. So um, anyway, Marlena, she's um, meeting up with Eric to ask him to drop the charges against um, Kristen. And he flat out refused. And I don't blame him. He wants her to pay for what she did to him. She ruined his life. She drugged him. She raped him. I don't blame him. I would want justice too. I can see where Marlena's coming from. You know, she's trying to save her husband, ex-husband, whatever. I don't I don't even think they're legally married anymore, but whatever. She's trying to save John. I can understand that. But what she asking Eric to do is just way too much. Like that's asking for way too much. But Here's my opinion on this. I, I feel like if Eric refused to do it, chances are Kristen is not going to go to prison. 
Stefano is just going to come up with another way to get her out of this. Because come on, Stefano, even without Demira Enterprises, Stefano is powerful. He has connections in the CIA. Come on now, he could get her off. I think the only reason he even took this opportunity to throw them a lifeline was because he was doing it just to give them an easy way out of this. You know, it's a win-win for them and it's a win-win for the Demiras. That's why I think Stefano even offered this, you know, as an easier way to get her out of these charges instead of, you know, using his connections to get her out, which he easily can do. So chances are she's not going to go to prison anyway. So that's why I think it would have been smart to kind of take this deal because there's no way in the world I would roll the dice on a Demira. There's no way, especially Kristen. I would not roll the dice hoping that a jury would convict her. No, hell no. Especially not with Stefano on her side. Hell to the no. I wouldn't do that. So he goes um to the thing and he starts praying. And that's when he runs into Brady and Brady started talking about how he's not going to be able to tell his father, you know, his father's going to die, not knowing how he really feels about him. And that's what prompted Eric to call Kristen. So I'm guessing Eric decided to change his mind and take the deal. Because, you know, I think, of course, you know, Brady changed his mind, you know what I'm saying, without even knowing it. But Eric changed his mind because of Brady. You know, he wants Brady to have his father and he has a chance to save John. So he's going to take it for Brady's sake. And, you know, I respect him for that, you know, because he's doing a lot for the family right now. And they're asking a lot of him because there's no way I would drop no charges. But I respect him for it. Um, You know, doing something for his brother or stepbrother. So Kristen returns to Daniel's apartment because she conveniently left her lipstick on purpose. <laughs> Kristen is my bitch. I love her. I'm going to miss her when she leaves, but that's my girl. Um, she went there, of course, trying to get the dirt on Teresa. But of course, Daniel not telling her nothing. So she basically throws it in his face that he still got feelings for Teresa. Kristen do know how to play the game and I love her. She know how to throw it back at you. She know how to throw your shit in your face. She know how to do it. And that's why I dig her. So he so Hope and Jennifer are sitting at the house eating ice cream. And that ice cream looked good. I think that was cookies they had inside of the ice cream too. Crackers. Or I think cookies. I don't know. But that shit looked good. It made me hungry. It made me want some of that. I was like, can I get some? Can I get a scoop? That shit looked good. Um... So, you know, she was talking about how Bo wasn't going to be there again for Sierra's first day of school. Um, and they decided to take a walk by the river and they start talking about Daniel and Jennifer. And she starts telling Jennifer to hook up with Aiden. And that's when Aiden is listening in on a conversation. So Jennifer leaves and Aiden is asking, Hope, why the hell is she trying to play matchmaker in his love life? So they get into a little tiff or whatever, and he pulls her in for a kiss. I can start to see why people don't want them together. I can see it. Hope and Aiden, because I'm not really into it either. Um, but why do they keep saying Hope is married? Hope and Bo are not married. She married Bo in 2000, but she married John Black in 1999. And her and John were still legally married. So her marriage to Bo was invalid. So technically, she's not legally married to Bo. Um, I guess they're married in a common law sense, but legally they're not. But I do think it's time for Hope to move on. Maybe Aiden isn't the right person for her, but I do think it's time for her to move on because it's been two years. So it's time for her to move on. Bo has basically been going almost two years, basically two years. It's time for her to move on. Maybe not with Aiden, but with somebody else. But it is time for her to move on and get her life on track, like get her a love life. Because Bo ain't coming back no time soon. So I hate that they're trashing Bo like this, though. Making him a deadbeat husband, making him a deadbeat father. I hate that they're doing that. Like, because Bo would have never stayed away this long, like two years without his wife and daughter. He would have never. No, hell no. So anyway, um, Sammy is at the Demira mansion, sipping on something, pouring herself a drink. And she noticed that the patio door was open. So she went and closed the door. And when she turned around, she was in for a shock of her life. She saw a portrait of Stefano hanging back up on the wall where her and Kate picture used to be. And she dropped her glass. So EJ came up behind her. She was scared because she thought it might have been Stefano. 
So she accused EJ of working with Stefano this whole time, which is not true, clearly, because Stefano, you know, he hasn't even been in contact with EJ. So he's trying to convince her that he's not the one who's working with Stefano. He doesn't even know how that picture got back up on the wall. He was in the garden the whole time. So he said he knew who did it. And that's when they call Harold in there. And Harold admitted that he's the one that took the picture down and put Stefano's portrait back up. But he said he did it because he got a phone call from Stefano telling him to put the portrait back up and to um, prepare for his arrival back to Salem tomorrow. So apparently the Phoenix has rose again. Um, I can't wait to see Stefano. Stefano is my dude. Like, I swear, this show uh, without Stefano would be really crazy. It would be an adjustment for me. But I know the show would go on. But Stefano, he just, that's my boy. Um, So EJ tells Harold to take that portrait back down and put Sammy and Kate's back up since he still works for Sammy and Kate. And Kate tells him to clean up the glass. I would have told that bitch, you clean it up. You dropped it, bitch. You clean it. So they're sitting here talking or whatever, and EJ gets a phone call from Mr. Shin, one of the major board members at Demir Enterprises. And he informed him that Stefano has struck again and he's called an emergency board meeting for tomorrow. So they're trying to think of a plan to keep him from getting the company back. And Sammy was wondering why it's taking Stefano so long to come after her and Kate, because according to EJ, the company bylaw said that the only way you can change leadership in a company is if it's in Salem. So now that he's coming back to Salem, he's taking back his company and, and EJ is saying that Stefano's not getting the company back. EJ, 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 don't be dumb. The last time you took Stefano company away from him. He predicted that you would be begging on your hands and knees, begging him to take back what you took from him. And he was right. So do, do you really want to go up against him again? See, this is why Stefano favors Chad over EJ. And I can't wait for Chad to come back next week. Chad is, I believe, coming back next Friday. And I can't wait. Some shit is going to go down between Chad and EJ. And I can't fucking wait. That's why everybody call Chad Stefano's favorite son. Because I do think Stefano favors Chad over EJ because, I mean, it's quite obvious why. Because EJ is disloyal. Um, and I can't wait to see. Because if EJ wants to get involved in this business, Stefano is going to make you pay. So you better bow out gracefully. Um, I hope I'm not forgetting anything. But I'll see you all you later. Have a great day. See you all you later. Tell me what you think about the episode in the comments. I'll read them. I'll reply. Let me know.